minimally invasive esophagogastrectomy with intrathoracic anastomosis. Uh, uh, dear chairman, friends, and uh, non-disclosures, we'll go for straight video. And uh, this is a patient uh, adenocarcinoma. Video, please. Adenocarcinoma of uh, cardia involving the part of the stomach and lower esophagus. So I need uh, esophagastrectomy. And uh, you can appreciate the growth and the lesser momentum is being opened. Liver has been retracted with the one five mm broad type instrument. And we mobilize the esophagus from both right crest as well as left. Now we moving down retrogastric. And in case uh, this is a patient at advanced malignancy for which uh, we already attempted uh, uh, chemotherapy preoperatively, still the bulky growth. And this left gastric, we are able to delineate and we dissect at the origin, put a clip first. After division of the left gastric uh, vein and artery, then we start taking down the nodes from the common hepatic artery up to the hilum and uh, nodes along the celiac axis group of nodes. This common hepatic artery, we pick up the nodes, place in a bag, take it out individually. Here you can appreciate that we use a self-made bag and not commercial bag. This is the common hepatic artery and celiac axis. We take the nodes lateral to celiac axis, bearing completely of the right crust um, between the portal vein as well as celiac axis. This is IVC here. We are able to appreciate, uh, we have taken part of the right and left crest muscle also part of this specimen. The mediastinum entering it. Once we are sure that we are going to take it down, then we go on to the to left side, this pancreas. We take the nodes along the splenic artery. And now we divide the gastrocolic momentum, extending towards the short gastric vessels. And once mobilized well completely, then uh, we make a gastric tube starting from the lesser curvature using the endocutter. And we make it, uh, keep it as broader as possible, minimum five to six centimeters at least. And uh, then we have to adequately uh, leave along the specimen so to have a margin free. So at the end of this uh, division, of the clearance of the nodes. What we do here, this is a bulky specimen. We can take it out from the chest or the here. So we divide this with a beyond the growth. We divide the esophagus and place in the bag. And this specimen will be taken out, financial incision. Thoroughly irrigate this area. And we mobilize the gastric as well, not to have tension, right gastropic pedicle. This is a gastric tube. What we do now at this stage, we take the gastric tube upper end into the mediastinum. And um, already it would have been opened up the right and pushed inside this. And this is a financial incision, depending on the size of the growth, five to six and five centimeter or a little more. We take it down, we place a gastric uh, drainage tube. And now we can see the semi-prone position. The patient is turned. And we start mobilizing the mediastinum. And we can appreciate the vertebra. It is a prone. And uh, slightly make it a semi-prone for the beginners, for their concern, if uh, case necessary, you have to open up the chest, they can do that. We can appreciate the iota, the thoracic duct. We can visualize. And here what we do, we have divided the esophagus. And uh, that length of removal is not adequate enough. So what we'll do, we go as much as proximally into the chest. And we keep adequate um, margin from the growth. And this adenocarcinoma, so depending on that growth, we'll go and mobilizing it. When trimmed further portion, now we can appreciate we have mobilized it. 
And many occasions we'll go dividing the zygous vein and we go up to the thoracic inlet and dividing it. Now we am just assessing the gastric tube, how much it is coming. So I can sacrifice the esophagus as much as possible. So no concern. If it is commensal carcinoma, here not possible, we have to go to the neck. And in case if it is not possible, then we have to go for colplex. Now you can see a zygous vein. And we put a tape for controlling it. One can use comfortably divide with endocutter. And here in developing countries, we try to reduce as much as. Not only that, the ligature is much more uh, safe. And uh, that is why we put ligature from the beginning. Now you can appreciate. We have mobilized it. I use only endocutter or um, harmonic scalpel divided. If I have to go for a staple assisted ascites anastomosis, I use endocutter. If I'm going for end-to-end -end hand soon anastomosis, then I cut with the harmonic scalpel, make it up. Here now what we are, I'm going to show a staple assisted. This is what we have previously been using it. Uh, now I'm making a small cut at the staple line of the proximal esophagus, already made it side of this. So this is a side-to-side -side, uh, staple. I'm using it 4.5 centimeters uh, uh, blue cartridge. You can appreciate it. And this anastomosic technique uh, advantage is, is uh, oblique stoma. So for a stricture or a, or a leak is a rare chance. Only thing we should have adequate weight. If it is not wide, then one has to go for end-to-end -end anastomosis. Otherwise, the step line and uh, this leak rate can happen. This is a PDS and a three zero V to use, but in case of bulky muscle, one can use a two zero PDS as well. And uh, we prefer interrupted suturing, starts with um, left end of this and come interrupted here. One can appreciate the rail tube has been placed across the stoma and post up we keep it for uh, irrigation and uh, decompressing this part. And this is a pneumothorax, it is not a vat. No, it contracts to video assisted where uh, pressure is different. Here, like pneumothorax, peritoneum, we have created pneumothorax at the pressure of 8 millimeter of mercury. You, I'm not handling the lung at all. The lung is collapsed and lying in the anterior compartment of the chest. So you have uh, enough space. You can handle, you can suture, and uh, that is uh, here. You can appreciate here. This is a two lung anesthesia. We use uh, one endotracheal tube, single lung, no but double balloon. So that way, and that uh, post-operative problem is not there. And primarily for esophagus, we published already, it's known. And uh, this is a, now you can appreciate after uh, reconstruction. And uh, this is the chest. We use a three port. Occasionally, we need one extra port, we'll use it. Thank you very much for patient listening. Thank you. So that prone positioning makes an impressive yeah. picture. When you, when you say semi-prone, how semi-prone are they? Yeah. Uh, initially, we're going um, uh, lateral approach we have seen, and uh, it is uncomfortable to working line, and uh, it has to one lung anesthesia, and lung comes on the way, you are not comfortable. Now, when we started doing a two lung anesthesia with the pneumothorax, the lung collapses, very comfortable. So I was using a prone nearly about 130 cases we published Jack. Then later we learned. Lot of concern, you are supposed in case necessary to thoracotomy. Prone is a becomes a handicap. Then we made a semi prone. So, semi prone can do a thoracotomy if necessary, no problem that way. And here is a double two stage. What we do, we make the gastric tube inside and take it out. Already has been this different technique, lateral portion published for which they have to six centimeter incision chest to remove the specimen, which I am not uh, happy about it. And the patient D here is a cheerful, happy. I think the speaker is also smiling. I'm happy that way. <laughs> uh, Carsten Schroeder from Great Western Cleveland. Um, two questions. When you do the, your um, dissection on the uh, celiac axis and you send the nodes, do you send them for frozen section at that time point? No, this case uh, already advanced and we are given chemotherapy. And uh, by doing a frozen, it's not going to change mine. And we, as much as possible, lymphadenectomy do it. So and, uh, but post rapidly we stage. And the prognosis we decide by this. But if it is early, then I will send it for frozen. That will be for a frozen is a margin, not the nodes. Okay, so you would operate on N1A disease anyhow? Yes. Okay, that's yeah. a big discussion. You <laughs> don't need to do that. Yeah, that uh, is, that is I know that. One more okay. question is, um, I see you cross-stapling uh, the esophagus pretty close to where I presume the tumor was. Do you think that's an oncologic uh, 
good procedure. Um, I know you have to do this because you take your, stom your stomach out to the belly. You know, I do it the other way and bring it out to the chest. So I'm a thoracic surgeon. My incision isn't six, it's four. Uh, and I think I can bring it out. But this is a different discussion. I think just the oncologic aspect is difficult. Yeah. Your concern is that, that's what I said. When we divide through the laparoscope, the esophagus, that is not the margin we have to take it. We have went in the chest, mobilize the esophagus adequately as much as possible. You can go up to thoracic inlet. That concern of uh, uh, margin, it's not there. You can remove as much as, do a frozen before making anastomosis. So and adenocarcinoma. Close the, you're transecting close to the tumor. That's what I think is difficult. No, it is at least three centimeters we keep in a margin go. And that uh, margin, we don't take it for anastomosis. Still further five centimeter or eight centimeter will go in the chest. So that's, that, uh, that concern is not going to be there. We have tested, and even that margin also, we analyze it. And in the only 5% of the cases, we ca we, that margin also has become positive. The staple line, and the staple line, again, we are going to take it. It will not spread further. We will that look we forward to seeing some long-term results to make sure that we don't have tumor implantation or some of these other considerations. Uh, unless you have a very, very quick question, we're going to have to move on. Yeah, quick question. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, yeah. Frank Breo from New Thank Jersey. You. We use a similar technique. My question is, do you ever utilize pyloroplasties? We discontinued about five years ago because we saw no ill effects. And also, cocorization of the duodenum. What happens if you cannot reach? Say so you have to go into the neck. What do you do then? We do pyloroplasty. Initially, we did. And uh, if you do, uh, to do a thoracoscopy, neck anastomosis, or chest anastomosis, I have to do pyloroplasty. But if I do transcital, I don't do it. Is of a gastric some of in practice we found out with, the, uh, we had made a study with 20 cases of these 20 cases without pyloroplasty. And does not it did not make difference. And after that, the pyloplasty. Otherwise, uh, we don't do it. But otherwise, pyloplasty, we do it more safer. It takes a little extra 10, 15 minutes safer, better to do it. Fantastic. We're going to yeah. move ahead. Uh, thank that you was very a fantastic much. presentation. We thank you very much. <laughs>